Hello and welcome to Core TV News at 7. I am Omotayo Alo. Senate President Bukola Saraki has accused popular online media and Sahara reporters of producing and posting a fake UK passport on its website to tarnish his reputation. He has also urged the British authorities to investigate what's in the crime as an act of criminality. The Senate President held that in a statement by a Special Assistant on Media, um, Bamikoli Omishore, that his UK solicitors have written the passport office in Britain on the need to get to the root of the alleged forgery and prosecute the offenders. Seraki also denied claims that he is not a Nigerian citizen. He admits having a dual citizenship but argued that nothing in the Nigerian constitution prevents him from aspiring for elective office. The Senate President signed her Section 25 of Section 1C to portray his point and suggested that Sahara reporters were serving the interest of an unnamed sponsor whose identity he claimed would soon be made public. President Mohamed Buhari's silence following the recent sacking of eighth group executive directors of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation is continuing to delay the appointment of new directors. It was learned that eighth department uh, that were added by sacked GEDs had been pruned down to full directorates while persons to fill these positions have been picked from within the corporation. Sources at the corporation stated that senior officials at the national oil firm had contested plans to bring in individuals outside the NNPC to fill the positions. At the corporation on Thursday, workers were seen discussing the recent happenings at the firm while many made it clear that they were apprehensive with respect to plans by the federal government to unbundle the NNPC. Oshu State Governor Rauf Arabashala says democracy is the best form of government that can foster equitable justice and national development. Speaking on the floor of the Oshu State House of Assembly in the first joint session after the impeachment saga, Arabashala praised the House leadership, especially the Speaker Najim Salam, for the stabilizing roles in Oshu State at a politically trying time. Rashid Rashid reports. Few days after the Ocean State House of Assembly threw into the trash the petition of Justice Falahom Yoloyede, the executive arm of the Ocean State government came visiting at the House of Assembly with the public also having access to the chamber. Speaking for the first time since the end of the impeachment saga, Raoul Faregueshala says parliamentary system is the best form of government for the growth and development of developing countries of the world. Faregueshala highlighted the importance of the legislature owing to its roles in the act of governance. Best form of government for effective development and progress in the developing economy or nation. But while many will see this visit by Arabeshala as one of appreciation and politically motivated, it is one both sides says it is to celebrate the speaker, Najim Salam, who clocked 50. Some of his colleagues in the house also extolled his leadership qualities. As the speaker of Oku State said, the only thing you can give him as a birthday gift is that support to succeed. I want to believe that you have been celebrated today as a result of your exemplary leadership qualities. I said the luck did not just come before him, but I want the whole world to know this and learn from it that he's a contented man and he's somebody that waits for God's time. Najim Salam, while acknowledging the honor bestowed on him by the House of Assembly, says it is a challenge to do more in the service of the state. As I step up my artistic dealing with the needy, I shall continue to provide my shoulder for the rejected, the disadvantaged, the neglected, and the downtrodden to learn on to the best of my ability. While the time now is for merrymaking between the House of Assembly and the executive, the public waits with anticipation the next step by the State House of Assembly on the petitioner in the impeachment saga for Lahomi Oloyede, Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Oshobo. The Oshun State Legislature's forum comprising lawmakers of both the National Assembly and Oshun State House of Assembly have invited stakeholders in the state, including former governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Iola Omishiri, to a conference on how to move the state out of its present economic crisis. The lawmakers who spoke through Ayo Omidiran as a 
press conference in Oshobo on Saturday said the forum is convoking the meeting in order to find solutions on how the state government can get out of the present economic quagmire. The forum said it is expecting Governor Raul Faragoshala, its deputy, Titi Lao Yitomori, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Najim Salam, and all the leaders to attend the conference. Omidira said the forum decided to call all stakeholders together to brainstorm on why the state had been experiencing difficulty in meeting its financial obligations to workers and contractors. Omidira added that the outcome of the conference will be presented to Arigwishola, stating that the forum would wait to see what the governor will do with it. Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Lasson Yusuf, who is from Oshun State, was absent at the press conference, but Omidira said the lawmaker was expected to attend the conference. Uh, former Secretary to Edo State Government, Osage Zeyamo, has urged the network of civil societies in the state to work to ensure that the state government does not mortgage the state. The Benin-born politician and aspirant to 2016 governorship election dropped this end during the unveiling of the Human Rights House in Benin City. Our correspondent in Edo State has more in this report presented from our studio. The former secretary to the Edo State government, Osage Seyamo, says the people of the state must all come together to ensure that the state is not thrown into a major debt crisis with the attitude of the Oshomali led government. The future of our state must not be mortgaged. And in any event, when money is being borrowed, our people deserve to know what is this money being used for. The ones you borrowed before, what was it used for? How much have you paid and how much is balance. The new one you want to borrow, what are you going to use it for? These are questions that the two people must be giving answers to. He however commended the leadership and the role of the civil society in the state and in the country with its constant stand on the part of the oppressed and the downtrodden. Professor Abraham Owewe, president of that work of civil society organization on Nigeria, who led the police politicians traditional rulers and other stakeholders to the ceremony to unveil the Human Rights House said that we'll continue to be on the side of the masses through constructive engagement and peaceful means to achieve results, adding that there are several causes and cases of extrajudicial killings yet unsolved in the state. It's to call for, call for a convocation of these various organizations so we can bring our hands together and strike best, stronger blows which will liberate our people from freedom, mental slavery, lack, oppression, rejection. For us generally, we are going to engage the process in the most peaceful manner. And we are going to ensure that our people that never again, the average adult child, never again, the average man in Nigeria will be oppressed. The Human Rights House has this not to secretaries have now been Christian. It's open to all. It's a place in which we come and get succor. It's a place where you can come and we'll assist you to get access to justice. Edo State Police Commissioner Samuel Dewey, who was present at the ceremony, assured the civil rights group that the, he will ensure an open door policy both at the command and across the divisions to evade frictions. One of the companies that we have been experiencing, we found out that Genesis, our uh, purely on communication gap. My office will be made open to you with the follow up Meanwhile, executive members of the organization later stepped out for recognition during the ceremony. Join us after this quick break for more. Is it what 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 crazy or talk crazy or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy news making the headlines. Black Maria is to, is to carry criminals, take looters, that are in government today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Stop you in the face. Kill me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our military to the secret. I said, to help On me. Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody have your right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge.
Thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, it's Core TV News at 7. And for more news and information, visit our social media platform, facebook.com forward slash Core TV News, and our Twitter handle at Core TV News NG. Get more on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Core TV, leave a space and news. A former Minister of Defence, General Domkats Bali, is denied being indebted to any bank, saying he never took any loan from Assets Bank PLC, as published in some newspapers last week. Bali was listed alongside the pastor and pro-chancellor chairman of the Governing Council of the Redeemers University, Tokumba Desoya, in a publication by the bank in respect of a 279 million naira loan facility by Lucratel Limited, a telecommunications infrastructure service provider. But in a statement issued on Sunday by Oluleke Oladogba, a business management consultant, Bali vehemently rejected the publication linking him and Adesonya with the loan. Retired General Dumkart in court, Bali and Pastor Tokumba Desonya never took any loan from and have never owed Assets Bank. They were never shareholders or executive director of Lucratel Limited, the statement said. Although Bali admitted that he and Adesonya were honorary chairmen and members respectively of Lucratel Limited between 2008 and 2009. He said there were neither shareholders nor were they ever involved in the management of the company as executive directors. Kaduna is set to begin the second round of the verification of civil servant as part of ongoing efforts to clean up the payroll. Government officials say the next round is to authenticate the outcome of the first exercise. Special Assistant Media and Publicity to the Governor Samuel Aruan disclosed in a statement that the exercise will resume on Monday, August 10. He added that the permanent secretaries and all the senior government officials are expected to identify their staff in the next phase of the exercise. The government expects all civil servants to present either the national identity card, voters card, international passport or driver's license for physical verification. The workers have since been informed that the exercise is a precondition for the payment of their July salaries. The Lagos State Police Command on Saturday forwarded an attempt to kidnap an Indian in Ikorodu area of Lagos. The spokesperson of the State Police Command, Patricia Amadi, said the suspect has been arrested in connection with the incident. She told the newsmen that a staff of D Star Metal Company, Odonla Ikorodu, and others still at large were involved in the crime. Amadi said the suspect has made some useful statement to the police on the kidnap beat. She ordered that a man on is on for the fleeing members of the gang. The Emo Rotary Club has installed new leadership and award members who had outstandingly gave in the best to the service of humanity. The memorable event held members across the state in attendance. The president of the club, while speaking to Court TV News, said the essence of the event is to bring in credible leaders to pilot the affairs of the club throughout the state and beyond. He called on the awardees to continue in their good work. We take another break now and we'll be back with more stories. Stay tuned. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Welcome back. And in business, the National Pension Commission has said it will extend the process of harmonizing and integrating its database with the National Identity Database to ensure complete synergy with the National Identity Management Commission. The Director General, Pencom Chinelo, 
Anohu Amazu stated this when the Director General, Chief Executive Officer of the National Identity Management Commission, Chris Oyeminam, visited the PENCOM headquarters to further review collaborations. She further said that PENCOM was poised to serve not only the pensioners of today, but the contributors to the various pension funds who are the pensioners of tomorrow. An emotional memorial service has been held in Japanese city of Nagasaki, where U.S. forces dropped an atomic bomb exactly 70 years ago. Speeches at the ceremony criticized the attendant Prime Minister Shinzo Abe for his plans to loosen the restrictions on what Japan's military can do. At least 70,000 people died in the attack, which came three days after another bomb was dropped on Ish. Hiroshima uh, solemn ceremony in front of guests from 75 countries, including U.S. Ambassador Carolyn Kennedy, began on Sunday with a declaration read out by children. A minute silence and bells marked the time of the explosion in 1945 at 11.02. A survivor of the Nagasaki attack, 86-year-old Semiruteru Taniguchi uh, described the injuries he had suffered and said he could not accept Abe's new legislation. The legislation would allow Japan to engage in combat in defense of Ali, which comes under attack for the first time since World War II. And to sport, Nigeria coach Sunday Olise has invited 23 players from the domestic league to begin camp ahead of next month's African Cup of Nations qualifying match against Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. A few players were retained from Stephen Cash's era, including Wari Rose, Gwalaon Salami, Solomon Kwambe, and Nelson Obonaya, while current Nigerian Premier League leading scorer. Tunde Adeniji of um, Sunshine Stairs and Hatland's Bright AGK have been handed a first time colour. The new manager has called up goalkeepers Ulufemi Themis and Ikechuku Ezewa in the absence of Daniel Akpayi, who has recently moved to Chipa United in South Africa. Akpayi has been touted as a future successor of Vincent Enyama, saying his heroics denied Bafana Bafana a crucial victory in a friendly in Japan last March. All players have been asked to report to camp in Abuja by Monday, August 17. Odion Igohalo got his first goal in the English Premiership as Watts forward played a 2-2 draw against Everton at the Goddison Park. The Nigerian replaced Jose Manu Jurado in the 74th minutes of the game and made his impact felt nine minutes later after marking the mess of the Toffees' defence to put his side in, in the lead after Rose Buckley levelled Mingwell Loyan's opener. But three minutes later, the Watford backline was undone as Corn Coley slid a short past Gums on the angle to cap a trillion first day spectacle. And it's a wrap on Court TV News at this hour. Thank you so very much for watching. My name is Omotayo Alo. Bye for now. <music>